God bless each and every one of you. We welcome you to the telecast, the broadcast, the program tonight. This is the Word of God, the Word of Power, Gospel Hour. Can I hear an amen? Amen. My name is Reverend Ronald Davis, and the Lord put us here to preach into this city. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. I want to be faithful to speak God's Word always. Never to add to it, never to take away from it. To hear, sometimes God averts my preaching. And as I hear, I speak. Can I hear an amen? Amen. In these, some of these messages. Amen. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, where, where the word of the king is, there is power. I want to preach his word in power. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Shall we pray? Father, I pray you would anoint me today. I pray, Father, you said to the churches in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, the churches are the people. You said, he that has an ear, hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. I pray, Father, you give them ears and hearts to hear and understand and see and hear what you're saying today. And then be quickened unto them, Father God. And I thank you, Father. I pray your word will go forth and have free course in this city, Father God. And do what you sent it to do. You said you watch over your word to quicken it, to hasten it, Father. Your word does not come back void, but it goes forth to do the very thing you sent it to do. I thank you, Heavenly Father. You said the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. And I, they will not prevail, Father God. I thank you today, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I pray the church will come into unity in this city and work together, Father God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As a body comes together, that works together, Father God. Not against each other, but for each other, Father God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, you said in your word in the Gospels, you said Satan's kingdom, Father God, if it was divided, it would fall. If the churches keep staying divided, it's going to fall. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I thank you, Father God, that this church is going to be built by the Holy Spirit. It's going to be built upon the word of God, on the foundation of the living God, in the name of Jesus. And it's going to be holy without spot, wrinkle, and blemish. In the name of Jesus and the Holy Spirit, Father God, is the overseer of the church. Father, have your will, have your way in our lives and our churches, Father God. In the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father God, for your power and anointing today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you glory, honor, and praise. I pray for outpouring the Holy Spirit in this city. I pray for evangelism in this city and in this nation. I pray for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Father from sea coast to sea coast, Father God, and it will go from here to the ends of the earth and give you glory. I pray it starts right here in Louisville, Kentucky, the hub of revival, the hub of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to take it to the nations of the world, Father, that the harvest can come in. And we will surely give you all the glory and all the praise in the holy, blessed name of Jesus. Whew, I feel the Holy Spirit so strong. God's going to pour His Spirit out in this city. I've been saying it, I've been preaching it, and there's coming a day when it's going to be released. When the floodgates of heaven are going to open and the outpouring comes. Hallelujah. In the last days in Exodus, he said, in the last days, uh, or in the book of Joel, he said, in the last days I will pour my Spirit out upon all flesh. And over in Exodus, it says that, uh, that the earth will be full of the glory of God. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit is what's going to bring the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Have a very powerful message today. There's some of you out there, you're fearful. Hey Amen. God told me, I, I, I listen to the Lord, and I speak and preach what He tells me to. Even in the middle of my messages, sometimes the Spirit of the Lord will interrupt me and speak something, and I speak it. Mm -hmm. Can I hear an amen? Mm -hmm. We should always hear God. He that has an ear, hear what the Spirit is saying. We need to speak it. The Bible says if you hear it in darkness, shout upon the housetops. Can I hear an amen? amen? What you hear in the ear, preach it. Amen. I hear it in my spiritual ears sometimes. And I stop right in the middle of the message and speak what God is saying. Amen. That's the way we should be led by the Holy Spirit. Speaking as an oracle of the living God. Speaking for God. Speaking the true word of the Lord, the rhema word of God. Can I hear an amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. There's a lot of people that are fearful. Some of you are fearful of different things in your lives. And, and it's cripple on you. Can you hear me today? Listen to me. Hallelujah. It's cripple on you. 
Amen. And you're using it as a crutch. Amen. In life. And it's stopping your forward progression in your lives, in your human lives, secular lives, in your spiritual life. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to preach today. I want, I want you to open your ears and hear what the Spirit of God is saying. God wants to set a lot of you free today. Over Timothy, he says, God has not given you a spirit of fear. So if God hasn't given you that thing, where did it come from? Come Amen. from the devil. Yes. Hallelujah. That's one of his biggest uh, uh, advantages to take advantage of you. To hold you into bondage. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. I pray God has set you free today. Amen. You shall know the truth, and I pray the truth of God's word has set you free today. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. That you have liberty today. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Name of this message today. We thank you for tuning in to the program this evening. The name of this message is Why Are You Fearful? Why Are You Fearful? What are you fearful of today? You need to overcome that thing. You need to overcome it. Amen? Revelation 12, 11. Hallelujah. We overcome by blood of the Lamb. We overcome by blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony. And they love their lives, not unto the end. If you have Bible, go with me today. Matthew. Hallelujah. I blew my pages shut. <laughs> Hallelujah. God found it again. I was once I was lost, but now I found the Word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Go with me if you have a Bible today, or write the scriptures down and go back and, and look at them later. So you can get a illumination or revelation of God's Word so it can set you free. So you can know what's going on in your life and what's causing it. You know a lot of people's conditions are due to spiritual conditions. You get your spirit delivered, you get your spirit set free and right. Then the rest of you will be okay. Yeah. Can I hear an amen? amen? It starts from the inside out. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the outside, the outward man, the outward appearance, the outward that gets us in trouble. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> that gets into bondage. Your flesh. Verse 23. Matthew 8, 23. And when he had entered to a ship, his disciples followed him. And beheld, behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea. And so much that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. There's a storm going on. Mm -hmm. Jesus, and he don't care. <laughs> Why don't he care? Because he knows what he's going to do. Amen? Amen. You need to know what you're going to do. He's not fearful. You shouldn't be fearful. You need to know what you're going to do. You need to know, first of all, the reason you don't and you're fearful because you need to know who you are in Christ and what you have in Christ. Amen. The power that he has given you. Come on. Hallelujah. He already knows what he's going to do. You should know what you're going to do. The reason you don't is because you don't know who you are in Christ and you don't know what you have in Christ. Amen. In him Amen. we move and live and have our being. Hallelujah. He said, the works we do, John 14, 12, the works I do, you shall do also. For you shall do greater works, for I go unto my Father. You need to believe that today. You need to know Amen. the Christ. You need to know the living, resurrected Christ and his power. Amen. Amen. He's given you power over the devil. Yes. He's given you power today. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're ambassadors for him. We, we're here in his place today. I hear an amen. He said, give you power to witness. Amen. Amen. These signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It doesn't say the devil cast us out. It says we will cast out devils. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And his disciples came to him and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are ye faithful, O ye of little, o ye of little faith? Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and waves obey him? And when he was come to the other side of the country of Gergenes, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of tombs, exceeding fierce, that no man might pass, pass them by that way. Okay, that's as far as we're going to go right now. That's, that's a different story for a different day. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> they feared the boat would be capsized and they might drown.
Jesus rebuked them. He rebuked them and then he rebuked the winds and the sea. Jesus does a double rebuke here. Come on. Amen. Because they don't believe. Hallelujah. He said, why, why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Hallelujah. He was asleep. He wasn't even concerned or worried because I told you he already knew what he was going to do. 2 Timothy 1 7 says, God has not given us a spirit of fear. If it's not from God, then it's from the devil. Fear is a very stronghold of the devil. Jesus rebuked the winds of sea when there was, and then there was a calm. There's a difference in being frightful for a second or two or fearful hallelujah, until you regroup. But if you stay in that fear, that's a spirit attacking you. Fear robs your faith. Amen. Amen. Fear and unbelief and doubt are the opposite of faith. Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith it is impossible to please God. Those that come to God must believe that He is God and He's a reward of them that diligently seek Him. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says to have the faith of God. We was originally made in His image and likeness. Why not have His faith? Mm -hmm. Amen. Mark eleven twenty two has have faith in God. Have the faith of God. God's not pleased with people that's fearful. Let me tell you something. I'm gonna tell you how terrible and awful this is. Unbelief and doubt. God, oh, that's one thing God don't like, and He won't put up with. Come on, Hallelujah. Amen. He said they could not enter into his rest in the wilderness because of their unbelief and their doubt. You know that Bible says unbelief and doubt and fear also is an, of an evil heart. That's what God called an evil heart. So you need to get rid of that fear today. You need to send it back where it came from, from hell. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm talking some sense to some of you out there. You don't even believe in God, some of you. You don't even believe in the devil. That's why you're bound and captivated and in bondage and sin and everything else and deceived and blinded. Hallelujah. God wants to set you free today. Get rid of that fear. Amen. Send it back where it came from. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People that's fearful cause other people to fear. It spreads like wildfire or forest fire. And I will show you in the Bible how it spread quickly. In Numbers chapter 13, this is a story of whenever... Uh, they sent out the spies. Moses and them sent out the spies. Joshua and Caleb and, a, and a one from each tribe, they picked a member to go out and spy out the land for 40 days. Come on. Amen. Some of you all don't even know that story because you don't know the Bible at all. That's why you need to shake the end and why you got fear on you right now. Hallelujah. If you don't know how to shake it, you don't know how to get rid of it, I'm going to tell you how today. First, you got to have accept Jesus, and then you got to have the power of Christ in your life. Amen. In Numbers 13, they sent out 12 spies into the Promised Land and to the Canaan to spy it out. Only Joshua and Caleb came back with a good report. The rest feared the inhabitants of the land, calling them giants. Caleb said that they were well able to overcome them and possess the land. The other ten gave a negative, fearful report, telling the congregation. They listened to the ten negative spies, and fear spread all through Israel through all the tribes. You see, that's why God don't like fear and fearful people. Because they instilled fear. What, how, I'm going to show you how demonic this is and how this works. The spirit that was on them, the other people started listening and believing it, and that spirit was spread through all of them. That spirit of fear spread like a wildfire. Come on. Then all of a sudden, all of them got fear. Amen. All of them in the congregation whining and crying. Hallelujah. Why did God send us here? He just wanted to kill us. That's all they had. That's fear, unbelief, and doubt. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Numbers 14, 1 and 2 and verses 2 and 4, they wanted to turn around and go back to Egypt. You see, the devil knew the people would become fearful and want to quit and give up and go back. That's why he puts fear on you. Oh, listen to what I'm telling you today. You know what fear does? 
It'll cause you to want to quit God. It'll cause you to go back the other way instead of going forward for, for God. You want to go back the other way, back into Egypt, back into bondage again. They want to go back to Egypt, back into bondage again. That's what fear do to you. Come on. Hallelujah. They wanted to quit, give up, and go back. That's his tactics, the devil. When you quit serving him and serve God, he don't like it when he loses you and you become born again and you become a Christian. The devil don't like that. Things of old have passed away. You knew creation, creature in Christ Jesus, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Things of old have passed away. But if you let them come back, it's going to cause fear again. Come on. You can let them come back if you want because you have a will, your own will. Can I hear an amen? Mm -hmm. God's not going to make you do anything. God is a gentleman. Amen. Hallelujah. The devil always wants to come back because you got rid of the devil. You gave up a sat satanic nature and you took on God's nature and his spirit. Can I hear an amen? amen? The devil always wants to get back into the house. Come on. Hallelujah. The Bible says when, 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 when the spirit departs, he goes looking for dry places, and when, when he can't find none, he wants to come back. And when he comes back, he's going to bring seven other spirits that are worse. And the state of that person will be worse. Come on. Don't let the devil back in. Hallelujah. Don't let that fear in. Hallelujah. He always wants to come back or tries to and always wants you to quit and give up and go back into Egypt, into bondage, and serve him again instead of serving God. You see, fear will cause you to serve the devil, not God. Because fear is not of God. He said, God said, uh, I've not given you a spirit of fear, but I've given you a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And that's what he wants you to have today. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. Fear can grip you if you let it and even immobilize you. Joshua and Caleb in Numbers 14, 6 through 9 he told them to fear not that God will fight for them. Verse 10, they wanted to stone Joshua and Caleb. And God showed, and God showed up. God was tired of their fearfulness and always whining and complaining and murmuring. God sent a plague, and the ten fearful spies died, and God made Israel stay in the wilderness for 40 more years because of their fearfulness and murmuring and complaining and not believing after all that they have seen him do, all the miracles that he did for them. Let me tell you something today. God, because of murmuring and complaining and fear, because they were fearful, God made them stay 40 more years in the desert, in the wilderness. They could have went on into the promised land. They could have went on and inhabited it. Some of you are staying in the wilderness right now. You're staying in your trials and you can't get out because of fear. God tack more time on them. God may tack more time on your trials. Come on. Till you get rid of that fear. That's what he's leaving you there for. To shake it and get rid of it. Get deliverance. Go to a Holy Ghost church. Go to a place that they cast out demons and devils. That's what the Bible says to do. I'm not telling you what a man says to do. Or a magician. Or, or some exorcist. I'm telling you what Jesus said we could do. These signs shall follow them that believe. Go to a Holy Ghost church that believes. A spirit filled church. That's empowered by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That's not witchcraft. That's casting the witch out. That's casting the devil out. Amen. We need to believe God and his word and his power. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be staying in your trial right now because of that fear and unbelief and doubt and murmuring and complaining. God may take more time on you. You need to get rid of it today. I'm going to pray for you to end. God will deliver you. Can I hear amen? So you can get amen. out of whatever you're in. And follow Christ again. Amen. Hallelujah. Quit listening to the devil. Quit taking what the devil has. The spirit of fear came from the devil. Reject it. Get rid of it. The Bible says, Submit unto God. Over in James 4 4. Submit unto God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. Resist that spirit in the name of Jesus. Resist that fear. It's dangerous to fall prey to fear. Remember, it's a spirit and you need to get rid of it. It displeases God. Fear doesn't trust God. All of Israel had to pay the price, too, for being fearful. Forty years, forty more years, labor, hard labor in the wilderness. Amen. 
They perished in the wilderness except for Joshua and Caleb and the young ones. See how fear spreads? See what happens when they feared? It affected them all. And all of them was judged for it. Get rid of that spirit. That thing can get off on people around you. Especially those who's not covered with the blood of Jesus. Especially those that's not born again. That is spread like a wildfire to other sinners and other people. Amen. Hallelujah. You need to get rid of that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you need to know, Christians, you need to know how, how to deal with the spirit and get rid of it. Amen. Hallelujah. Whew. Hallelujah. God doesn't like fear. Hallelujah. Don't let fear grip you. They perish because of it. Don't let fear cause you to perish. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 3.25 says, Be not afraid of sudden fear. Proverbs 29.29, 29, Fear of man bringeth a snare. Proverbs 10.24, The fear of the wicked shall come upon them, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. If you have a lot of fear in your life, you need deliverance or prayed for. You don't have to have that. It's a spirit attacking you, coming against your mind. Rebuke it or get it rebuked. You don't have to put up with, with that as a Christian because the ten spies were fearful. They injected fear into tens of thousands. Don't let that fear spread. Get rid of it. Don't let it spread like a wildfire out of control. Get rid of that spirit today in the name of Jesus. I'm going to tell you how. See how it spreads, and it cost them all. Even Joshua and Caleb had to stay in the wilderness with them. Even though it wasn't them, they believed. Don't speak fearful things. Amen? Amen. Don't spread it like them. And Deuteronomy 20, verse 1 says, When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, and see horses and chariots, and a mightier people, be not afraid of them. Don't fear, for the Lord is with thee. Same today, don't fear, for the Lord's with you, in you. 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that is in you than him that is in the world. Hallelujah. And you have overcome, and you have overcome them because of the greater one in you. Verse 8, when they numbered the men to go to war, and the officers shall speak to the people and say, Who all here is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return unto his house, unless his brother's hearts faint too like yours. You see, he didn't want that in the army. It was spread to others. God didn't want that fear spreading. He told them to go stay at home. He couldn't use them. If you have fear today, God will send you home. And he won't use you too, neither, mm -hmm. in the ministry, because you're spreading the wrong spirit. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. In Judges 7, 1 through 3, Gideon had an army of 32,000 men. God told Gideon he would smite the enemy as one man himself. Hallelujah. God told Gideon, whoever was fearful and afraid to go home, Gideon lost 22,000 men when he said, who has fear? He started with 32,000 men. God said, who all is fearful, send them home. He, he lost 22,000 men because of fear. But God didn't want that in his army. It was spread through all of them. They quit. Come on, fear calls you to quit and give up. Amen? Amen. Then they got down to 10,000 when you read that over here in Judges chapter 7. He got down to 10,000 men, and God told him to do something. He said, tell them to go drink some water. And those who lapped it up with their hand, God would use. And he uses 300 of them, amen, that did that. And he sent the rest home. I'm here to tell you, in closing, let me tell you something. Let me tell you the worst part about all of this. In Revelation 21.8, it says, the fearful shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's terrible. That's all the more reason to get rid of that spirit of fear today. The fearful shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Remember that, what I said today. You better get rid of that fear or it can keep you out of heaven. Can I hear an amen? Mm -hmm. I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for you. If you don't know Jesus, say, Lord Jesus, come to my heart. Be the Lord Savior in my life. Some of you have fear because you never accepted Christ, and that fear is attacking you, and you don't know how to get rid of it, and you don't have the power to get rid of it. But if you accept Christ today, His power will come upon you, and His power will get rid of that spirit. Say, Lord Jesus, if, if you want to make heaven today and not go to hell, the Bible says in Romans 10, 9 through 12, and in Revelations, or I think chapter 22, if your name's not written in the Lamb books of life, you shall no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. 
If you've never accepted Jesus, that's the only way today you can get to heaven. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for my sins, and I believe you was resurrected on the third day, and you died for me and my sins, and you said, if I confess in my mouth, ask you into my heart, be Lord, Savior of my life, and believe in my heart unto righteousness, I would be saved. Say this prayer today. Say, Lord Jesus, come to my heart, be Lord, Savior of my life. I believe you died for my sins, and I accept and receive you. You just got born again to save. Get in church and serve the Lord. If you have fear on you today, I bind that spirit of fear, and I command it to go and loose you right now. Every person listening to my voice right now that has a spirit of fear, I take the authority Jesus Christ has given me, and I bind you and cast you away and cast you out, never to come back with your spirit of fear again. Loose those people and let them go right now. Come out. Loose them and let them go in the name of Jesus. Father, I loosen your peace right now upon those people. I loosen peace right now, Father. Jesus said, peace, my peace I leave with you, not as unto the world, but my peace leave I unto you. I leave, Father, I thank you for releasing peace right now. Calm and peace, Father. And I pray, Father, right now that you would forgive them, that they go on and fulfill the will and the call of God. No more fear in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you right now. I pray you got blessed today, and I pray you got delivered of that fear today. And you spirit of fear, I command you to never come back to these people in the name of Jesus. You're bound. What's bound on heaven is bound on earth. What's loose in heaven is loose on earth in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father, right now in Jesus' holy name. Get in church and serve the Lord. Amen. Don't have fear in your life. Get rid of it in the name of Jesus. See you next program. We love you.